Well, hey there. Welcome to my booth. I'm Jay, and uh, I've been working on this audiobook called The Asset. It is the first in a series of books called the Lance Spector series by a wonderful author named Saul Herzog. And I wanted to bring you along for this passage because I think it's really cool. The writing's really, really compelling. It's an exciting passage. And so I'll read it for you and then talk about some of the stuff that's going on in my mind as a narrator, both uh, for illustrative purposes and a behind-the-scenes peek at what goes into this kind of thing. Um, just a bit of a disclaimer, there is some uh, adult-ish material here. There's a bit of gunplay as well as language. Um, so take note of that. And if you find this kind of thing helpful and you'd like to see more, let me know down below. And if you think others would find it helpful and you're willing to expend the effort to click the thumbs up and subscribe stuff, then that helps other folks find it. Uh, so let's dive into this passage. In about 60 seconds, the X would come through the door and he'd be armed. Go back there, he said to Sam, sending her to the bar where Laurel and the bartender were waiting. What are you going to do? I'm going to make sure you don't call him again. Sam hesitated, then said, He has a gun. A gun don't mean much if he doesn't know how to use it, Lance said. He went out the door into the cold night. There was a white Range Rover on the street with tinted windows, engine running, its blue headlights shining in his face. The wind brought a flurry of snow from the mountains, and Lance raised his hand in front of his eyes. Someone was getting out of the passenger side of the Range Rover. Lance strode over and kicked the door shut before they got out. Then he held one fist in the other and heaved his elbow through the window. The X was inside, shattered glass all over him, his one wrist in a cast. His massive hulk filled the seat like he was a grown man sitting in a toy car. He had a Sig Sauer 9mm pistol in his good hand. Next to him was the friend with the broken nose. The X swung the gun, and Lance knocked it from his hand and grabbed it. Hello, fellas, he said. Fancy seeing you here. He grabbed the X by the back of the head and slammed his face into the dashboard. The other guy reached for something under his seat, and Lance said, Uh-uh. The guy paused, then went for it anyway. Lance shot him in the thigh with the nine millimeter. The man cried out. Reach forward again, Lance said. The man looked at him, then at his thigh. You shot me, he cried. Lance pulled the X up by the hair and said, So what brings you fellows into town? The X shook his head. I'll warn you, Lance said. The sheriff's department is all the way in Libby. We just don't have the tax base here for a force of our own. The X raised his hands. Mister, he said. Mister, Lance said. You don't know who you're messing with, the X said. Lance scoffed. I don't know. Me. You come to my town, he said. My house. You point a gun in my face. Mister the X said again, and Lance slammed his face against the dash even harder. The friend made to reach under his seat again, and Lance pointed the nine millimeter at him. Go ahead, he said. The man raised his hands. Keep him on the wheel, Lance said. Lance pulled the X's head up again and said, Hardly seems fair he's the one who got the bullet. It's your show, after all. No, the ex cried as Lance reached into the car and pressed the gun against his leg. Here, Lance said. Don't, the ex cried as Lance pulled the trigger. The ex cried out in pain and grabbed his leg. Now, fellas, Lance said, what say I get in the back seat? Tell you to drive somewhere nice and quiet. 
and then kill the both of you. So it's an uh, exciting passage. Uh, it takes me a second afterwards. Um, so what I really, really enjoy about this passage is a couple things. Firstly, the writing is so uh, cinematic. And what I mean by that is it's really action driven and you can see everything that's happening. It, it plays out like a movie in your head. And so that really informs how I narrated this one. Uh, it's how I narrate a lot of stuff generally from a sort of cinematographer's perspective, if you can call that. But this text really, really lends itself to that, where I can, I, I narrate as if it's a shot from a movie. And so one that I really like one bit is the, uh, the guy paused, then went for it anyway. Lance shot him in the thigh with the nine millimeter. That line is kind of like three shots where there's the the guy paused, and then you can leave a little bit of space to watch his face sort of develop, the thoughts in his head. Maybe there's a quick flashback to Lance as he's holding the gun at him under his circumstances, like, what are you going to do, buddy? Then went for it anyway. And then it's almost a punchline to a joke. Lance shot him in the thigh with the nine millimeter. Um, and uh, the whole passage kind of plays out that way, uh, and it, almost like you're telling a good joke. It's, it's funny like that because these two guys are tough, tough customers. They're big wig, uh, criminals in this area and they come up expecting to just take Lance to task, this guy Lance Spector, but they don't know that he's a CIA operative. So he just is toying with them more the more or less. And then from the character motivations because the dialogue is such a large part of this passage, you get to play the characters a lot. And what I like about this one uh for Lance in particular is it's it's a fundamental thing with acting where you sort of want to play or when you have the opportunity to play against what something might be it's really, really rewarding. And in this case, it's a showdown where there's gunplay and stuff. So it might be tempting to be like the tough guy. Hello, fellas. What brings you to town? Fancy seeing you here just to like really get in their face and angry. But if you play it the opposite, where it's a really tense situation, it's life or death. These guys have showed up to kill this man. And to play it super calm and laid back, uh, makes the tension that much more palpable. Um, so the like, hello, fellas, fancy seeing you here. The more I can play that as just like, how's it going, guys? And then, of course, the big sort of capstone to that is, now, fellas, he says the word fellas in this one, what say I get in the back, tell you to drive somewhere nice and quiet, and then I kill the both of you? It's tempting to say that line, ominously but if you say it as almost a throwaway it's terrifying this man just got in the back seat and says i'm going to kill both of you i mean that would be terrifying and it makes the situation a little bit more funny to the viewer in a dark way uh, it also illustrates how in control lance is as a operative uh, because of course this is towards the beginning of the book and it lets you build out from there. Um, and it just shows you Lance knows what he's doing. And the last thing that I'll mention that I really like about this passage from an illustrative perspective is there's a tenant that I picked up for audiobook narration from Pat Fraley. He is a renowned narrator and audiobook director. And he says, when it gets hot, go cold. And what he means by that is when the passage gets intense, whether that's uh, heated, in this case, violence or uh, tension, or if it's romantic, sexual, things like that, um, you don't need to infuse it with emotion as the narrator. Uh, it can be tempting, like in the passage here, where Lance is slamming this guy's face against the dashboard. It's tempting to get into it as the narrator. 
But you don't need to. You can just report the action uh, as the narrator. And the listener in their mind's eye will fill in the gaps. And by allowing them space to sort of fill it, which is why I think the uh, narrating it like a cinematographer is really helpful, because sometimes maybe time slows down. It doesn't have to play in real time. Um, like the passage we talked about, the guy paused, then went for it anyway. Lance shot him in the thigh with the 9 millimeter. I don't need to infuse that with anything. The text has it all there. And by giving air or space for the listener to do things with their own imagination, that can often lend to a more engaging listening experience. Uh, so this, thanks for letting me share this passage with you. If you have any questions about this or anything else voiceover related, drop me a line down below. Keep an eye out for this book. It's going to be coming out soon and it's really good. <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, and until the next one of these, uh, be well and I'll see you there. Toodles. Toodles.